Hi, in this video we're going to look at uh, functions and moments in a discrete case, meaning we're going to look at a discrete random variable uh, uh, functions and moments. And then we'll look at the continuous case or for continuous random variables uh, in, another in another video. Okay, so uh, it, again we're going to illustrate the functions and moments and, and these are things that you'll be tested on in the P exam. And let's illustrate this with just kind of a simple example. Let's say we got a six-sided fair die that's rolled and let's let cap n be the random variable representing the number rolled. First we want to write out the probability mass table for cap n. So I put the word mass in parentheses because a lot of times I don't even use that word. It's implied though if I don't use it but I just call this a probability table. And what that is is a two column table and the first column is the support you, you list out. Again, this is a discrete random variable. So you can list out the values of the, the random variable. That's what it means to be discrete. Uh, and in this case, the, the, the values, I think it's pretty obvious you're rolling a six sided die. The values are gonna be one, two, three, four, five, or six. And then the second column, you put in what the corresponding probabilities are for uh, each of the events. So the event that uh, cap n equals one, for instance, Cap n equals one means you, you know that's the event that you roll a one. What's the probability you roll a one? It's a fair die. Being a fair die means that probability is one sixth, as is the probability for each of the other uh, events that cap n is equal to any other value. For instance, the probability that cap n equals four is one sixth. And again, we've already talked about this notation. I would I would denote that as a piece of four. You could write that as a piece of four. And the and the the terminology that we use here is we could say that there is a point mass of one sixth at cap n equal to four. So that's why it's called a probability mass table. It's just, uh, again, the, the terminology is that we call those probabilities point masses. Okay, let's change the problem up a little bit and let's look at the probability of rolling a four or less. So a four or less would mean that cap n is equal to a one, a two, a three, or a four. And I've highlighted in red what those probabilities. So the probability that cap n is less than or equal to four, I'd sum up those values in red, I get four, six. And of course that reduces uh, to two thirds. This is an example of something called a cumulative distribution function or a CDF. We would write a cap f with a subscript of cap n of four, function notation of four, so the left-hand side will be read, read cap F sub cap N of four. Cap F is denoting the, cube, the CDF, the cumulative distribution function. And let me, I'll go ahead and state it here. I put the word cumulative in parentheses because oftentimes I won't say the word cumulative, I'll just say the distribution function. I'll either say the CDF or the distribution function, but the word cumulative is implied if I don't say it in the word distribution function. So the cap F is the letter that we use to denote the distribution function. So cap F sub N of four is equal to two thirds. That's how we, would, that how we would denote this. And more generally, the distribution function evaluated at some value K is, is nothing more than the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to that value K. That's the definition of the cumulative distribution function. And it's, it's a probability, so the values are always going to be between 0 and 1. All right, now let's change the probability up a little bit, and, and let's look at the probability of rolling a number greater than 4. So greater than 4 means that cap n would be a 5 or a 6, so I've highlighted in red those corresponding probabilities, and of course we would add those up to get the probability that cap n is greater than 4, and that reduces to a 1 -third. This is an example of what's called a survival function. So uh, cap s is the letter that we use to denote the survival function, and we would write a cap s with a subscript of cap n. This is the survival function for the cap n random variable. We're evaluating it at 4, so cap s sub cap n of 4 equals 1 -third is what I would write there, and more generally, evaluated at k, the survival function would just be the probability that the random variable uh, is greater than k. Now, uh, uh, an obvious fact here should uh, hopefully, uh, well, let me, let me again mention that the survival function as a probability is defined as a probability, so it's also going to be between 0 and 1. And if you add up the the, sur the distribution function evaluated at k to the survival function evaluated at k, you take that sum, you'll always get 1. And it's pretty easy to see because the distribution function evaluated at k is the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to k. The survival function evaluated at k is the probability the random variable is greater than k. And of course, those are complementary events. So when you add up their probabilities, you're going to get a 1. 
Okay, now let's move on. And, and uh, those are some functions that you're going to be expected to know what they mean on, on the exam. Let's look at uh, another, uh, change the question up now. Let's determine the expected value of the random variable. So I want to introduce it this way. Let's say that we rolled this, this die six times. What would we expect to happen? Well, if you rolled it six times, you would expect to get one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, and one, six. And so the average of the six rolls then would be a one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. Those are what the values are that you got on those six rolls. And then divide that by, add up all those dots and divide by six because you rolled it six times and you would get a 3.5. This 3.5 is what we call the expected value of the random variable cap n. Notice the expected value of the random variable cap n is not even part of the support of the random variable. You're never going to roll a 3.5, but that's what the expected value of this random variable is in this case. And let, let me kind of um, uh, illustrate another, another um, uh, uh, formula for the expected value. Uh, this way. So uh, again, we, we start with the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. We divide that by 6. This is what we would expect to get in six rolls. And then uh, I'm going to take each term in the numerator and multiply it by 1 because I want to split up then what's in the numerator. Uh, or I want to split up this one term expression there, that big one term expression, as a sum of six terms. So I'm going to write that as a 1 times a 1 6 plus a 2 times a 1 6 plus a 3 times a 1 6 and so forth. And, and uh, again, go back and slow the video down if you need to, to, to see that you're going to get the same thing, uh, same result, uh, no matter which one of these expressions you use, you're going to get the same result. So now let's focus on the last result, uh, or the last expression. And notice that in the last expression for each term, I'm taking the value of the random variable, which I'll write as an n, and I'm multiplying it times times 1 6, which is, I can think of as the probability that the random variable was equal to that value of n. And then I'm going to add that up. So this is a sum product is what I'm doing here. And so that's the definition. That's how we actually define what the expected value is for the random variable n. So let me get some more room here. The expected value of a random variable cap n is defined to be a sum product. You're going to take the product of the, 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 of each, for each value in the, support of the, in the support of the random variable, you're going to take the value and multiply it times its corresponding probability and then add those values up. So again, this is the expected value of the random variable. It can be thought of as the long-term average of observations of the random variable. So that's kind of how I introduced it. You know, if you, if you, if you rolled that dice over and over and over and over again, and you just kind of took the average of all those observations, that's what the expected value of the random variable can be thought of. And it can also be thought of as a weighted average of the values of the support of the random variable with the weights being the corresponding probabilities. So I'll, I'll mention, I'll come back to that statement again in just a second. This expected value is also called a, uh, a first moment. So you see in the title there we have moments. The expected value is actually what's called the first raw moment of the random variable. Raw is in parentheses because oftentimes I don't say that word, I'll just say the first moment, but the raw is implied here. So it's the first raw moment of the uh, random variable. All right, so being the first raw moment of the random variable, let's, let's change the problem up. Let's, let's determine what the second raw moment of the random variable is. So again, the first raw moment is just the expected value here that we've, uh, that we've uh, established it with this formula. And so the second raw moment is, instead of the random variable cap in, what we're going to do, in, instead of taking the values of the support, we're going to then, because it's the second raw moment, we're going to square the values of the support first before we do the sum product. Okay, so the second raw moment uh, uh, of the random variable is this sum. I'm going to take the values uh, in the support of the random variable, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to square them, and then I'm going to take the sum product with their corresponding probabilities. Now, this could be extended to any value of k, and it, and, and it is. Uh, so uh, watch what I do here. I'm just going to change the 2 in the bottom line and the second raw moment to a k, and that's the kth raw moment. So a second raw moment, or I could do the kth raw moment. Okay, so let's go back to the second raw moment. This, this is a, a, an important moment, and it, you'll see in later videos where it's used. 
But let's calculate for in this particular case what the second raw moment is. Okay, so in this case then, I'm, I, I'm gonna do exactly what the directions told me to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna square the values in the support and then multiply times the corresponding probability. So I get a one squared times a one six and then a two squared times a one six and a three squared times a one six and add those values up. So when I mentioned a little while ago the weighted average, uh, what I meant, uh, what, what's meant by a weighted average is, uh, is, is exactly this expression right here. So uh, this last expression would be considered a weighted average of the values one squared, two squared, three squared, four squared, five squared, and six squared, where each of the weights is equal to a one sixth. So anytime you have a weighted average, you can think of it as, uh, uh, as a moment or as an, ex an expected value of uh, a random variable or, or a function of the random variable. Okay, I'll let you do the arithmetic here and show that uh, when you go through the arithmetic, uh, uh, you got a common denominator of six. So if you add up all the numerators, combine that as a one-term expression, add up all the numerators, you get a 91 over six, which is, which is a, a 15.16 bar. Okay, uh, let's change the problem up because that was such a, a you know, kind of a, kind of a trivial uh, or easy example. Let's change the problem up a little bit. Let's do one last example. Let's, uh, this time, let's say that our, our die is not a fair die, but an unfair die. And it's a weighted six-sided die. And it's weighted in such a way that I'm giving you the probability distribution table. So for instance, the probability of rolling a three is going to be three out of 21 here, not one sixth like, like it would be with a fair die. But in this case, you're going to have a higher probability of rolling a three than you would a two or a one and so forth. And so, uh, so let's say that uh, uh, the, the, the uh, numbers observed uh, when the die is rolled is given in this, uh, the probability sense, the random variable where this is the probability distribution table. Now, one thing that I always did, or I found myself doing is when I was given, on an exam, when I was given a probability table, or what I was told a probability table, I, I, for whatever reason, I always felt like I needed to verify that it was a probability table. And you would do, I would do so by adding up all those probabilities and seeing that you actually do get a one. You do need to have that the sum of the probabilities is equal to a one. Uh, and, and, and they do in this case. But uh, I guess what I'm saying is on the actuarial exam, if they tell you that it's a probability table, you don't really need to go through and verify that. Um, uh, th that kind of a waste of time, I think, that when I did, used to do that on exams or when I saw exam problems. If they tell you it's a probability table, it's a probability table. They're not trying to trick you that way. Okay, so now let's answer these questions that have to do with these functions and moments that, I, that we talked about before. Uh, first of all, part A, let's determine the value of the point mass at n equals 5. Well, that's just a terminology thing. The point mass at n equals 5 is just the probability associated to where n is 5. And so that would be a 5 out of 21. So my answer there is a 5 out of 21. The second and third questions have to do with uh, uh, distribution and survival functions. Uh, or I'm sorry, parts B and part C have to do with uh, distribution and survival functions. Uh, what's the distribution function evaluated at n equal 2? Well, that's the probability that cap n is less than or equal to 2. That's the definition of the distribution or the CDF. The CDF at evaluated at 2 is a probability that the random variable is less than or equal to 2. I've highlighted what those probabilities are. So 1, one over 21 plus 2 over 21 or, or, or uh, 3 over 21, which is 1, 7. So that's the definition of the distribution function. Uh, part C, what's the uh, survival function? Well, I'm going to first use, uh, since I already did part B, and I know that the, uh, the, the distribution function and the survival function, when they're evaluated at the same value, they're going to sum to 1. So I'm just going to use that fact and say, well, the survival function at 2 would be 1 minus the distribution function at 2. Uh, and so that would be 1 minus 1 seventh or 6 sevenths. Now, if you wanted to do it directly, you could say, okay, well, the survival function at, at 2 is the probability that the random variable cap n is greater than 2, strictly greater than 2, and I've listed those values uh, here. You add those up, and you'll get 6 sevenths. So either way, the survival function uh, for this random va variable evaluated at 2 is, is uh, 6 sevenths. And now what about the uh, part D? What's the expected value of the random variable? Well, remember this is the definition. It's the first moment. It's the expected value is the sum product uh, in the probability table. So 
I take each value in the support of the random variable, I multiply it times its corresponding probability, and then I add them all up. And so when I do this, I'll, let, I'll leave it to you to show uh, that you'll get a uh, 91 over 21. It's a common denominator of 21. You'll get a 91 in the numerator, which is a 4.3 bar, if I didn't make a mistake on the arithmetic. And finally, what's the second moment of this random variable? Uh, so again, the second moment is just a, a generalization of what the first moment is. So uh, we first then square the values of the uh, uh, in the support. We square the n values and then multiply by their corresponding probability and I'll add all those up. And once again, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you do the arithmetic and, and uh, uh, verify that we get actually a 21 for that. Okay, so those are uh, some functions and moments in the discrete case. Uh, we'll talk about a continuous case uh, in another video. All right, I'll see you in the next video.